Bonjour à tous. Aujourd'hui, on a le plaisir d'accueillir Tatsuo Ibushi qui nous vient de Keio et qui va nous parler donc, de modèle d'Isobe Kakinuma pour des vagues comme une approximation. Thank you very much for this introduction. And first of all, uh, I'd like to thank you for your kind invitation for this seminar. And uh, this, this is my first visit to Shangri, so uh, I'm very happy to be here and to give my talk. And also, I'm very happy to meet again Denise and Didier. So today, uh, I'd like to talk about uh, this Isobe Kakinuma model. And uh, in fact, the last several years, I was interested in studying uh, this model. This is a model for water waves. And this model was derived by Japanese researchers Isobe and Kakinuma. Uh, they are not mathematicians nor physicists. Uh, they, uh, researchers in coastal engineering and they proposed their model by using the variational structure for water waves. So today uh, I'd like to talk, uh, I'd like to introduce the structure of this model and I'd like to show you that this model is actually the higher order shallow water approximation for the water waves. <coughs> okay, uh, let me start to, to formulate the water wave problem. So uh, we consider the water in n plus one dimensional Euclidean space, and we assume that the shape of the water region is something like this. So here, uh, this is a water surface which moves, and this blue region represents the water and this is the bottom of the water. And we take the gravity into account as an external force. Here, G is a gravitational constant as each. And moreover, we assume that this water surface and this bottom are represented as graphs like this. Here, H, H is a positive constant, uh, which represents the mean dips of the water, and here B, B represents the uh, bottom topography, and eta here, this represents the surface elevation. And in this talk, B is a given function. Actually, we easily uh, observe the shape of the bottom, so this is a given function. But here, eta, this represents the water, the surface elevation, it is, it is hard to observe this quantity, and this is the main unknown function. And as usual, uh, we assume that this water is incompressible and ideal fluid, not viscous fluid, but ideal fluid. And the flow is irrotational, no vorticity. Then, the fluid motion is described by the following system of equations. Here, uh, capital phi represents the velocity potential, namely the gradient of phi represents the velocity of the motor. And uh, here in the fact follows, we use the standard notation of Nabla and Laplacian, is the Nabla and Laplacian with respect to the horizontal special variables. And the Nabla and Laplacian with suffix capital X is the Nabla and Laplacian with respect to the whole special variables. And uh, the first equation, this is nothing but the Laplace equation, is a continuity equation, which represents the conservation of mass in the fluid region omega t. And uh, the second equation, uh, these are the boundary conditions on the water surface. The first equation is the Bernoulli's law is lifted on the water surface. And the second one, we usually call that uh, this is a kinematic boundary condition, which represents that uh, the water surface moves with the motion of the water. 
And finally, equation three is the boundary condition of the bottom, uh, which is also the kinematic boundary condition on the bottom, where n represents the normal vector on the bottom. So this is nothing but the Neumann boundary, homogeneous Neumann boundary condition on the bottom. Uh, these are the basic equations for the water wave problem. And uh, these are the starting point of our analysis. The difficulty is, of course, uh, the unknowns are, uh, in this formulation, the unknowns are the velocity potential, capital phi, and the surface elevation data. But the capital phi defined on the unknown water region. So this is a kind of free boundary problem. This is one of the difficulty. And another difficulty is, of course, the nonlinearity of the equations. Anyway, uh, uh, it is well known that there is another equivalent formulation for the water wave problem. Uh, we introduce a new unknown function, phi, small phi, as a trace of the velocity potential on the water surface. Then, uh, we can transform the previous basic equations to the following one, which is the equation for this small phi and surface elevation eta. So, the, uh, here we use some notation, capital lambda, uh, which is called so called Dirichlet Neumann map. Uh, more precisely, the Dirichlet Neumann map is defined as follows. Under appropriate assumption, under appropriate regularity assumption on the water surface and the bottom, for any function phi on the water surface uh, in some class, uh, this boundary value problem for the Laplace equation in the fluid region with Dirichlet uh, boundary condition on the water surface and the Neumann boundary condition on the bottom has a unique solution. And by using the solution capital phi, we define the operator capital lambda by this formula. So the right hand side represents the Neumann data of this solution. And uh, of course, this is a linear equation, so this operator becomes a linear operator. And so therefore, this operator maps the Dirichlet data on the water surface to the Neumann data on the water surface. So therefore, this is called the Dirichlet data map. And uh, if the water surface and the bottom are both flat, then this Dirichlet Neumann map, capital lambda, can be written explicitly in terms of fluid multiplier like this. So, this is the first order non local operator. Anyway, uh, we can transform this problem. Yeah, one of the advantages of this transformation is that. These are the equation for the whole space array. So there is no more free boundary problem. But the difficulty is the analysis of this Dirichlet Neumann map. This Dirichlet Neumann map is linear, but depends on the unknown free surface eta, strongly nonlinear. So this is some difficulty. And uh, this Transformation. Uh, this formulation is sometimes nowadays called the Zaharoff transformation or the Zaharoff transform uh, formulation. Anyway, uh, now let me explain the variational structure for the water wave problem. Uh, in 1967, Luke shows that the previous water wave problem has a variational structure by giving explicitly the Lagrangian. And his Lagrangian is given by this. Uh, this is a vertical, this is an integral with respect to the vertical special variable in fluid region of this integral. Now, what is this one? If we use the Bernoulli's law, then we can rewrite these quantities 
as follows, where capital P is a pressure and the capital P atom is a atmospheric pressure normally assumed to be constant. So his Lagrangian is essentially the vertical integral of the pressure in the fluid region. And of course, this term we can easily integrate, and which gives these two terms. And unknowns are capital P and eta, and B is a given function. So the variation uh, in the calculation of the variation, uh, this term do not contribute. So let's neglect this term. And uh, let's denote the other term by a theta. Then this is his Lagrange. And action function is nothing but the space time integral of this Lagrange. So more precisely, I should say that this is a Lagrange density. And the Lagrange is given by the space integral of this density. In fact, if we calculate the uh, first variation of this action function, we obtain the following formula by after the integration by parts. So this is the first variation. And uh, this is the volume integral in the water region. And uh, these two integrals are the surface integrals on the water surface. And this is also the surface integral, but on the bottom. So that's, now let's calculate the variation. If we take the first variation with respect to the velocity potential capital V, then we recover the Laplace equation in the water region. Then if we take the first variation with respect to the surface elevation, then we recover the Bernoulli's law restricted on the water surface. If we take the first variation on the trace of the trace of the velocity potential on the water surface, then we recover the kinematic boundary condition on the water surface. And finally, if we take the first variation of the trace of the velocity potential on the bottom, then we recover the Neumann boundary condition on the bottom. So, the corresponding Euler-Lagrange equation are exactly the same as the uh, water wave problem. So this is what looks short. But anyway, actually we understand that this is a Lagrangian, but what it means? This part, this is a velocity. So gradient of phi represents a velocity. So velocity square. So this represents the kinetic energy. And here, this part represents the potential energy due to the gravity. So these two terms gives the total energy. But we have another term. In the classical mechanics, the Lagrangian is usually given by the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. But in this case, uh, this is a sum of the energies and additional time. What is the meaning of this quantity? So let me, uh, in order to explain that situation, let me explain also the Hamiltonian structure of the water wave problem. Uh, uh, before giving the Hamiltonian, uh, let me explain that the conservation of energy so here, this integral, this is a volume integral of the velocity square. So this is uh, kinetic energy. And by using the uh, Green's formula, we can rewrite this integral as a surface integral, right? Like so this is a kinetic energy. And here, uh, this is a potential energy due to the gravity, which gives this one. And the sum of these two energies are the total energy. So the kinetic energy plus potential energy. And actually, this energy is conserved quantity. And in fact, for any smooth solution for the full water wave problem, satisfy this conservation of the energy. Now, in 1968, Zaharoff showed that the full water wave problem can be written as a Hamiltonian canonical form, like this. Here, 
the canonical variable is eta, the surface elevation, and phi, the trace of the velocity potential on the water surface. And the Hamiltonian is, is given by this. This is essentially the total energy. If we multiply the density of the water, then it represents actually the total energy. And so, uh, in, the classical, in the correspondence to the classical mechanics, eta represents a position vector, and the phi represents momentum. So, and if we calculate this variational derivative explicitly, then this equation gives the exactly what I present this one. Of course, Zaharov do not use explicitly this derivative mm. above, but this is exactly the same. So this is the reason why this formulation is called the Zaharov. Anyway, from the point, uh, by the analogy of the classical mechanics, once we obtain the Hamiltonian, then we recover the Lagrangian by using the Lusander transformation. And uh, the corresponding Lagrangian is, should be given by this. And now, let's calculate this term. And if we use the second equation for the full water wave problem, then this term gives twice of the kinetic energy. And twice of the kinetic energy minus Hamiltonian, the total energy. So this gives the difference between the kinetic energy and the potential energy. So this is much more natural. Lagrangian. And the fact is the relation between the, this Zaharoff Lagrangian and the Lux Lagrangian. And in 1977, Miles mentioned the relation between these two Lagrangians. To, in order to compare two Lagrangians, we put a loop as the in space integral of this Lagrangian density, L theta. And the L theta is nothing like this. So, which gives this term plus the total energy, namely the Hamiltonian. And now, let's remember that phi, small phi, is a trace of the velocity potential on the water surface. By using this, let's interchange this uh, vertical integral and the time differentiation. Let's interchange these two ones. Then we obtain, it's not commutative, of course, and we obtain this one. So by using this relation, we can obtain the relation between two Lagrangians. So the difference of these two Lagrangians is the time derivative of some quantity. And if we when we calculate the first variation, then usually we fixed the both end of the trajectory. So if we integrate, if we calculate the action function, then we need to integrate these two Lagrangian. Then this term gives the end point. But this end point is fixed. So if we calculate the first variation, then this term disappear. This means that these two Lagrangian equivalent in terms of the first variation. So, therefore, so, but more precisely, this we have some minus sign. So therefore, looks Lagrangian, Lagrangian should be multiplied by minus. Then this gives the integral of the pressure. So this is the meaning of the, uh, his Lagrangian. Okay. Now uh, we understand a little bit about the uh, variational structure for the water wave problem. So now let's move to the Isobe Akinuma model. In 1994, Professor Isobe uh, proposed his model, 
and by approximating the velocity potential in Lux Lagrangian as follows. Here, this is a Lux Lagrangian, and we have these terms in terms of the uh, velocity potential. And uh, in this Lagrangian, he approximate this potential as follows, where ci is some appropriate function system with respect to the vertical special variable, and which may depend on the bottom topography P. In this approximation, we should specify this phi i. And here, phi i is a coefficient. This is a known coefficient. We should specify this one, but this is unknown. This is a fault. So plugging this approximation in Luke's Lagrangian, we obtain the approximate Lagrangian for these unknown surface elevation eta and this coefficient, phi i. And their model is a corresponding Euler Lagrange equation for the approximate Lagrangian. And now, so we, if we use a different function system, we obtain the different isobekaki number. So the problem is the fat is the best choice of this base function. And the key is given by the Bujinesque in 1872. And in the case of the flat bottom, uh, Bujinesque gave this formula for the velocity potential. So where P0 is a trace of the velocity potential on the bottom, not the surface, but the bottom. And this is nothing but the Taylor approximation, Taylor expansion of the velocity potential, capital P, with respect to the vertical spatial variable around the bottom. So uh, in this case, in the case of the flat bottom, maybe the base function is better to take the polynomial of even degree. But in the general case, for the general topography, this formula becomes much more complicated. Anyway, we can expand the velocity potential capital V with respect to the vertical special variables around the bottom. But in this case, we also have the term of what's the way. So in this case, we should use the both, even order and the odd order. Anyway, I'd like to treat the both cases at the same time. We choose the base function as follows. Let phi zero phi i blah 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 phi uh, pi, p1, uh, p0, p1, blah, 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 pn, the integers satisfying this order. And we approximate the velocity potential, capital phi, as follows. And particularly in the application, we choose pi as 2i in the case of the flat bottom and i in the, case, in the general case. Okay, now, plugging this approximation into Luke's Lagrangian, we obtain the approximate Lagrangian. Actually, we can explicitly calculate the approximate Lagrangian as follows. A little bit complicated, but for the moment, the explicit form is not so important. But just please memorize that we use this notation, capital H. Capital H is the local dips at the point x at time t. Of course, eta is a known function, so h is also a known function. And uh, the corresponding Euler Lagrange equation are as follows. These are the corresponding Euler Lagrange equation, and this is a Isobe Kakinuma model for our choice of the base function. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a little bit complicated, and this is a little bit strange, so I should explain the structure uh, of this model. 
So if we take the first variation of phi i, the coefficient phi i, we obtain this first equation. This is an evolution equation for eta. We have the time derivative here. So this is an evolution equation for eta. And it contains up to the second order special derivative of ej and the first order special derivative of eta. And index i moves from 0 to capital N. So it means that we have capital N plus 1 evolution equation for just unknown scalar function eta. So actually, it overdetermines this. So in some sense, it's strange. And uh, if we take the first variation of the approximate Lagrangian with respect to eta, then we obtain this second equation. This second equation is an evolution equation for unknown pi. So we have n plus 1 unknown pi, but we have only one evolution equation. So therefore, this is underdetermined equation. But totally, the number of unknowns are n plus 2, and the number of equations is also n plus 2. So therefore, it's not contradictory. So in this sense, the isobe kakinma model is overdetermined and underdetermined composite system. And now uh, we consider the initial value problem to this isobe kakinma model under this initial conditions. Uh, before giving our existence theory, we pose the theory for this initial value problem. Let me explain the structure of this isobe kakinma model. And uh, the first step to understand the structure of this strange, in some sense, strange equation is to analyze the uh, linearized equation around the trivial flow. So let's consider the linearization, linearized equation. And uh, in the case of the flat bottom, the linearized equation along the trivial flow has the following form. Where here, vector i is a vector whose component are all 1. And here, a is the second order differential operator given by this. And a0, a1 are constant matrices given by this. So therefore, we can easily calculate the so-called dispersion, linear dispersion relation for this isobe kakinma and the dispersion relation is given by this. So the diagonal part corresponds to this operator. And here, this is a symbol of this operator. And here, the off-diagonal part comes from this part. Where z is a wave vector, and omega is the angular frequency. And moreover, we can expand this determinant as follows. As follows, here. So this is a disp linear dispersion relation for the isobe kakinma model. So this is nothing but just a quadratic equation for the uh, angular frequency omega. Very simple equation. But we have two determinants. And uh, this A tilde, this matrix, is given by this. Calculated from the original matrix A. So concerning to these two determinants, we have the following proposition. For any z not equal to 0, the symmetric matrix A is positive. But when z equals 0, then this matrix has 0 eigenvalue. And uh, here, A tilde is not the symmetric, but uh, there exists a positive constant C such that the determinant of this 
matrix is strictly positive. And uh, also we can see that these determinants are polynomial with respect to this. Anyway, by using this proposition, we see that these determinants are both non-negative. So the solution omega of this equation is always here, so that we can calculate the phase speed. We can define the phase speed. Phase speed is given by the angular frequency divided by the wave vector, uh, wave number. And uh, from the previous equation, we have this one, uh, which will be denoted by C i k. I can means is on a couple. On the other hand, the phase speed of the full water wave problem is given by this, which will be denoted by C omega omega. How about the relation between two phase speed? Anyway, uh, by proposition one, we see that in this limit, this phase speed converts to some constant which is non-zero, which is not consistent to this equation for the original phase speed. And uh, here, this limit, h multiplied by the wave number, is the ratio of the mean dips to the wave length. So this, roughly speaking, this limit implies a deep water limit. So this means that the Kakinama model is not a good approximation in the case of the deep water. But as we will see that as a shallow water approximation, this is really, really good. So now we choose pi as 2i. Namely, we approximate the velocity potentials as follows. Then we can show that the square of the phase speed of the isobe kakinuma model is 2n, 2n per the approximate of the square of the phase speed of the full water wave problem. More precisely, the difference between two squares are estimated by this one. Here, h multiplied the wave number is essentially the ratio of the mean dips to the wave length. So this, roughly speaking, this represents a shallow water parameter. And we have very high order for n plus two. This means that the Kakinuma model is a very nice model as a shallow water approximation. And uh, in the case where pi equal to y, namely, if we approximate the velocity potential as follows, not only the even order, but uh, even order, but also we add the odd order. Then we do not have such a previous variable result, but we still have this estimate. Roughly speaking, this estimate means that if this, uh, roughly speaking, this means that this order of the error determined from only of the even degree. If we add the term of odd degree, then this order of the error doesn't change. Anyway, uh, we have such a previous part. And now let's go back to the nonlinear problem. So this is the isobe kakinuma model. So this is a nonlinear equation with this integral. Value problem. And uh, so, uh, as I explained before, the full water wave problem has a conserved energy, which is a total energy. And uh, Isabe Kakinuma model also has a conserved energy, which is given by this. So we just replace capital P by our approximation, phi approximation, in the definition of the energy. Then, then, then we can write this quantity in terms of our variable, 
And then we can show that for any smooth solution for the isobe kakinuma model, this quantity is conserved. So isobe kakinuma model has a conserved energy. So in order to check the numerical calculation, we have some advantage if we have some conserved quantity. And actually, it has no conserved quantity. But until now, I just present to you the good point of the isobe kakinuma model. But isobe kakinuma model has a serious drawback, as you can easily see. The isobe kakinuma model can be written in the matrix form as this. Here, this is the time derivative of the unknown, of unknowns, and uh, this, this term does not contain any time derivative. And the coefficient matrix of this time derivative has always zero eigenvalue, uh, which means that the hypersurface t equals zero is char characteristic for the model. So therefore, even if the initial data is sufficiently regular, we cannot, uh, in generally, there is no solution for the isobe kakinuma model. In order to guarantee the existence of the solution, we need to restrict the initial data to some manifold. Actually, uh, these are the uh, isobe kakinuma model. We have capital N plus one evolution equation just for one scalar unknown data. So from this, we can easily eliminate the time derivative of eta. Then, we can obtain the capital N independent relation, which does not contain any time derivative. So this means that if there exists a solution for the isobe kakinuma model, then the solution should satisfy these relations. This means that initial data also should satisfy these relations for the existence of the solution. So now, the problem is if the initial data satisfy this relation, then can we construct the solution of the software cutting model? And the answer is yes, but uh, also, uh, we need another con uh, structural condition, so-called the sign condition. Uh, it is well known that the well posedness of the initial value problem for the full waterway problem may be broken unless this sign condition satisfied. Uh, key, capital P is a pressure, and N is uh, outward unit normal vector on the water surface. So, if we transverse the water surface from the air to the water, then uh, the pressure should be increased. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, initial value problem becomes imposed. Actually, if the direction of the gravity is opposite side, in this side, maybe the water is like this, then this uh, condition is broken, and actually the problem, in such a case, the problem is, becomes ill-posed. And now, let's write down this condition in terms of our variable. Because in, uh, in our variable, we do not have any pressure P. But we have the Bernoulli's law here. So now, let's use to this law to calculate our approximate pressure, P. So just we replace P by the, our approximate pressure and P by our approximate potential. Then uh, we can write down this condition in terms of our variables. Something like that. Actually, we can explicitly write down that condition in terms of, of our variable. But anyway, uh, this is a little bit technical, so let's speak to this. And uh, one of our result is as follows. If initial data is sufficiently regular, 
and the initial data should satisfy the necessary condition and uh, stability condition, sign condition, and everywhere dips is strictly positive. Then the initial value, initial value problem for the isobe kakin memory is well posed. This is one of our results. So this means that if it is imposed, then their model is bad. But uh, we, we show that uh, this is well posed, initial value problem is well posed. So we can say that this is not so bad model. But uh, here uh, I should remark that in order to guarantee, in order to construct the solution, the initial data should satisfy the necessary condition, namely these conditions. A little bit complicated relations. How do we prepare the initial data? The initial data should satisfy these relations, otherwise we cannot construct the solution. How eta is the surface elevation, so there is a physical meaning, but phi i is just a coefficient. It does not have a physical meaning. How we do we how do we observe this data? How we construct this prepared initial data? The answer is as follows. Uh, let's remember that the phi, small phi, is a trace of the velocity potential on the water surface. This is a canonical variable. So I guess that everybody do not have objection to specify the initial data for eta and phi. And uh, phi, between phi and our variables, there is some relation. Uh, this is the relation. Let's remember what is the definition of our approximation phi. So by this approximation, let's take the trace on the water surface. And then the left hand side should be phi, of course, in the approximate sense. In the right hand side, we can write explicitly in terms of our variable. This is nothing but this relation. So, I guess nobody have an objection to specify the initial data of this quantity. So, and uh, this equation and the previous necessary condition for the existence of the solution, once we give this phi and eta, then by using such equations, we can, uh, we can construct uniquely this phi. So therefore, we can pre by, use, uh, by solving that equation, we can prepare the initial data. Anyway, uh, the problem is well posed, not so bad. But in order to explain this is a good equation, we should, we should show more. And uh, I'd like, uh, uh, I'd like to show you that this is the Kakinama model is actually good higher order shallow water approximation. In order to explain that, we need to rewrite our equations in terms of uh, in the non-dimensional form. To this end, we need to introduce a non-dimensional parameters. Uh, as before, let h be the main dips. And uh, lambda is a typical wave length. And we define delta to the ratio of the mean dips to this wave length. This represents the shallowness of the water. And by using these physical quantities, we discale the horizontal spatial variables by lambda, the vertical spatial variables by h, and so on. And plugging this into our equation, uh, we obtain the uh, equations in the non-dimensional form. And uh, the equations have this shallow water parameter. And later I will show you the explicit form of that equation. But anyway, 
uh, before going to further, let me explain the case of the linearized Hitch in the case of the fact. So we consider again the linearized equation to the isobe kakinuma model around the trivial flow in the case of the fact. And uh, in this case, the analysis is much easy. And let eta ww pw be a solution of the linearized water wave equations and phi ik p0 blah 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 phi n be a solution of the linearized isobe kakinuma model under our choice pi equal to 2 pi. Then by using our previous theorem one we can show that the errors between the solution of the full problem and the isobe kakinuma model is of order delta to the power for n plus two. And uh, let's compare to the another equation. It is well known that the Sambuna equation, the shallow water equation is one of the famous shallow water equations. And uh, in such a case, the solution of the full water wave problem can be approximated by the solution of the Sambuna equation, but the error is just of order delta square. And the green and the equation are nowadays known as the higher order shallow water approximation. And the solution of the full problem can be approximated by the solution of the green nugget equation up to the order of delta to the power of four. So much better than the Sambuna equation. But here, in the case of the isobe kakinuma model, in the most simple, simplest case is capital N is equal to zero. But in this case, the isobe kakinuma model is exactly the same as the Sambuna equation. So this does not contradict it, of course. But the next step, next level, is we take capital N equal to 1. So just we add another one unknown. Then this error is of order delta of 6. So the next order is we skip the green line, the level of the green line. So much better than the green equation. But uh, this is a linear analysis. So we have to show that uh, nonlinear case. But before giving such a result, uh, let's compare to the another model. For example, in 2015, Matsuno, uh, he is a physicist, Japanese physicist. He derived the extended green equation as a higher order shallow water approximation. Uh, he called his model is uh, delta 2n model. This is, a mod, uh, this is an approximation of the full water wave equation with an error of order delta to the power 2n plus 2. So this is the uh, approximation of the equation. And for example, the linearized equation of his delta 4 model is imposed. This means that it's not, unfortunately, it's not a good model. The referee told him it to him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, for example, the linearized equation for his delta 6 model is well posed. Delta 4 model is ill posed. Not good, but the delta 6 model is well posed. There is some hope. But, this model has seventh order special derivative. It's too much. So numerical computation, it's not acceptable. So compared to, for example, compared to this uh, higher order model, the advantage of the isobekakinema model is the initial value problem is always is posed. Not this case. And uh, this is a higher order shallow water approximation with an error of delta for n plus 2. Much better than this. This is 2n plus 2, but this is a 4n plus 2. Much better. And uh, it does not contain any higher order derivative term. So it contains delta 6 model is 7th order derivative term. Delta 8 model is a 9th order derivative term. But it's a model. 
So just second order pin. Do not have any higher order derivative. It has an advantage to, to do the numerical computation. And in the derivation, we do not assume any smallness of the solution. For example, in order to drive the KDB equation, we need to restrict the solution to be small. But we do not assume any smallness assumption. So therefore, it should be hold the strongly nonlinear energy. But we need to show this one. And uh, so this is a uh, Isobekakinuma model in the non-dimensional form. So here we have a non-dimensional parameter. And here also, but delta to the minus 2. So in some sense, a singular limit. But anyway, a little bit uh, technical, so let's skip this one. So this is a necessary condition for the existence of the solution. So this is a relation between the trace of the velocity potential on the water surface to the, to the, uh, to the variable, uh, to our variables for the isopecatum model. And now I'd like to compare, I, I'd like to show that even in the nonlinear case, the previous result should be hoped. So to this end, we also need to rewrite the full water wave problem in the non-dimensional form. So this is a uh, full water wave problem. The, this is a Zaharoff grain serum formulation in the non-dimensional form. So we have a non-dimensional parameter delta here, here, also here. And uh, for the existence of the solution for this problem was given by, for example, by myself. Also, David Grant gave this result. Actually, I gave this result. I know I derived, I showed this result in 2006, mm -hmm. and uh, I distributed the preprint. But uh, for the fabrication, I wait three years until when, until. I waited this paper appear, unfortunately. But anyway, uh, there is some existence theory of the full water wave problem. So now let's compare to the solution of the full problem to the isobe model. And the uh, result is the following. Uh, this is the approximation. We consider two cases. First case is the bottom is flat. And we choose pi to 2pi. And the second one is a general bottom topography. And in this case, we choose pi equal to pi. And we assume the following. The initial data for the Zaharoff canonical form. So the canonical variable, eta and phi. Uh, and uh, the initial data should satisfy uh, sufficient regularity. And this condition means that everywhere the dips of the water is strictly positive. And as I said before, if we specify these initial data, then we can prepare the initial data for the isobe kakinuma model. Isobe -Kakinuma model. And uh, the initial data satisfies the necessary condition for the existence of the solution. And we can construct the isobega kinema model. And the result is as follows, roughly speaking. Uh, okay, uh, under uh, the previous assumption, the necessary condition and some negation determine uniquely the initial data for the isobega kinema model, as I explained just before. And let Phi eta, uh, phi, uh, eta w and phi w be the solution to the initial value problem to the full water wave problem. And let eta isobe kakinuma and phi zero blah 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 phi n be the solution to the isobe kakinuma model with appropriate choice of the initial data. And we define by phi i k. Uh, which uh, is some, in some sense the approximation of the velocity potential, the trace of the velocity potential on the water surface. Then we obtain the following result. So 
the error between the solution of the full problem and the solution of the Isobekakinema model is estimated by this. In the first case, its error is 4n plus 2. And in the general case, the, th this is a case with a flat bottom. And this is a general case. We have this order. And from the analysis of the linear equation, this order are optimal. So even in the string, strongly nonlinear regime, this error estimate is four. So this means that actually the isobe kakinuma model is really higher order shallow water approximation and it has some advantage for the application for the new maker computation. So now I should stop here. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions? Yes. So, uh, are you aware of any numerical studies involving this model? Me? Yeah, exactly. I did not know. I, I did not, I did not uh, do the numerical calculation, mm -hmm. but... Actually, Professor Isobe first mm -hmm. proposed this model. Yeah. And uh, in 2000, Professor Kakinuma extended this method to the internal gravity wave. Mm -hmm. And after, Professor Isobe just proposed that model, but it seems that he did not succeed to mm -hmm. obtain a good numerical scheme mm -hmm. because this is uh, hypersurface T equals zero is uh, characteristic, mm -hmm. so we need some trick to obtain the mm -hmm. good numerical scheme. But it seems that this Professor Isobe could not obtain this scheme. But 2000, after this result, Professor Kakinuma used his model in his numerical calculation so many, many times. And mm -hmm. actually, he explained to us that uh, his result is much fit to the, uh, to the experimental result mm -hmm. compared to the other model. For example, he is working on the internal way. Mm -hmm. So, the, so, so today I'm talking about the gravity wave, surface wave, but his internal wave in, in the water. Mm -hmm. So in this case, of course, there, maybe you know that there is a Samuna equation. This is the same as this. And uh, the, what is the correspond to the green nagdi equation in the internal wave? It's a Chekamasa model. Uh, mm -hmm. And he explained that he explained that his numerical calculation is much fit to the experimental result rather than the mm -hmm. Chekamasa model. So yeah, they actually uh, they do the numerical calculation, but they do not know. They do they could not explain why they are computation is much better. So, so therefore, I should, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to support his mm -hmm. result, so I do this research. And actually, there is some reason. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. These papers, they publish it in Japanese or not? Uh, Japanese. So therefore, I think that the <laughs> Euro European, in Europe, uh, this model is not known. Mm -hmm. Even in Japan, mm -hmm. no. So even with the JFA to the man map, yeah. this model seems more efficient in numerically than uh, other method with only uh, derivative. Uh, actually, nowadays, so we have some development of the numerical calculation and also the computer. So therefore, actually, sometimes people say that uh, now, nowadays, uh, 
yeah, here, this, this is a full program. And in some sense, uh, this is equivalent to, to this one. In order to calculate the degree of map, each time step, each time step, we should compute. Uh, we should calculate the problem of this elliptic equation. So it's expensive, but nowadays we can do that. So we can do, but for example, in the field of coastal engineering, for example, nowadays in Japan, we have so much tsunami. So we have a tsunami warning system. Uh, if there's an earthquake, so in TV, we can see that there is no tsunami or there, the tsunami would come. Uh, in order to, uh, to do that, they already uh, made some database. Uh, and uh, when the earthquake happen, we can easily obtain the, the how do you say, daily wave, the, the wave of the earthquake quickly from many point. And we can, uh, we can specify the epicenter of the earthquake and the magnitude. After that, tsunami comes. But uh, by using this da data, they, how to say, they, there's some trick. I don't know uh, if at some point, the, for example, magnitude 7 appear, there's some deformation of the water. I uh, no, no, on the seabed. And uh, by using this data, they already made the numerical calculation. <coughs> but uh, so, in many places and many magnitude, there are so many patterns, but they made all of pattern. So huge, they should do the huge calculation for, in order to make the database of the tsunami. So therefore, nowadays, actually, we can solve this one. We can solve this different number map. Maybe you want to know that, that, mm -hmm. that part. But uh, we also we need more good approximate model, which is much more cheaper than this model. So, and usually th that model is a Sambuna equation, but uh, practically the Isobekakinama model is not used, unfortunately, not now. But, uh, maybe if we need much more precise resolution, the Isobekakinama model is a good model. But the problem is, <laughs> honestly speaking, the problem is we do not know precisely how the bottom deforms. We can actually, when the earthquake happens, we can, uh, we can uh, specify the magnitude and the epicenter. And uh, in the coastal engineer, they use some formula. When some this place, the magnitude blah, blah, appear, then it deforms like this. But this part is, in some sense, very important. But unfortunately, as far as I know, we do not have rigorous mathematical theory for the deformation of the bottom when the earthquake happened. This is a destruction of the bottom of the, how to say, this, this Destruction, in some sense, it, uh, this problem is connected to the crack problem, also. and the crack problem is really difficult problem. For the moment, we do not have enough mathematical set. <laughs> okay. okay, thanks. Other questions? Okay. Thank you again. <laughs>